Welcome to this week's Planet Shakers podcast. Planet Shakers conference presence is now being held across two venues, Melbourne Convention and Exhibition Centre and 400 City Road Planet Shakers Church. Both locations will have a live band and speaker for every session. It's going to be life-changing, so log in to register.planetshakers.com to register and select your venue. Now let's jump into this week's podcast. It's not quite the end of the year, but it's close. And, uh, and so we've got a couple of months left in this year, but you know, at Planet Shakers, Pastor Russell, we re- uh, releases the vision kind of in February every year. And uh, so we've got quite a few months left of our year of victory. But we had our last leaders discipleship of the year just this week gone. And uh, I took the opportunity, I just thought it would be a cool thing to look at all of the things that we've testified about just that we've seen in Planet Shakers News. And there's been a lot more. We just kind of share one thing every single week. But I, I, I know this is gonna bless you. I don't think this is gonna bless you. I know this is gonna bless you. Here, I just got a list of things that we've celebrated since the year of victory was declared. Are you ready for this? The week after we had a year of victory released, as one of our leaders in church had pain in their foot, totally healed, but at the same time, healed of wheat and dairy allergies. That's good. The next week, we have one of our leaders invite her whole family along to church who got saved, encountered the love of God. Now they're planted in our Sydney campus. The next week, one of our leaders um, was having asthma attacks, couldn't sleep properly, totally healed of asthma. The following week, we celebrated what we saw at Easter. 600 new people came along. We had over 430 new people every week for six weeks leading into Easter as well. The next week, we had one of our leaders, the bank... Um, suddenly increased their loan repayments. That's probably happened to a lot of people this year, but they were struggling and uh, got together with their Urban Life Group and their pastors and prayed about it. They received a refinance offer from their bank that they never applied for, got a lower interest rate and two cashback payments worth six and a half thousand dollars. That's pretty good. Then we had our Believe team overseas pray for a mum who had just given birth, uh, was in great pain, all of the pain went. They also prayed for a woman who had cancer in her mouth, couldn't talk, couldn't open her mouth. On the spot when they prayed for her, her mouth was healed. No more pain could open her talk, her mouth wide and talk freely. That's awesome. The next week, we had one of our North Campus, North Campus Pastor Steve people, um, was under a bit of financial strain, but felt God challenge them to stretch in the miracle offering. Two weeks later, checked a bank account. There was a bank deposit, which was enough money to pay for college, help a friend out and pay for their home construction. Woo! The next week, one of our staff members and his wife felt God call them to give a certain amount of the miracle offering. It was above and beyond what they'd given before. So they made an agreement in their heart. This is what we're gonna give. Before they even gave it, someone went up to them and blessed them with the exact amount that they were gonna give. Woo! Then we had a woman in our church who was applying for PR, but had cancer. And the lawyer said, you're never gonna get your PR because you've got a cancer diagnosis. And we celebrated that she was healed from cancer and got a PR. Come on, somebody. That's just up to June. Then we had a a girl who's gone through a pretty rough time. Her dad was about to pass away. Her mum had passed away. She started backsliding, going to parties and doing drugs, but she came back into church, got completely healed and set free. Now she's serving in Empower and doing Bible college. Then we celebrated a woman who was totally healed of hay fever and asthma. Then the following week, we celebrated the expansion of our Geelong building. We, we fit more seats in there. Just this week, we're now seeing 600 people come along to our Geelong campus. Then the next week, we were in Believe Fiji, a man that had been in hospital for three weeks with asthma, totally healed. Then we celebrated a woman in our church who had a herniated disc in her lower back. The doctor said she couldn't do any activity. She was completely healed. Then the following week, we celebrated a guy in our church who was basically allergic to the whole world. Um, Dairy and nuts and seafood and sesame seed and beef, beef, allergic to beef. God healed him. We went and had a Big Mac. The next week, we celebrated a guy in our church whose wrist was sprained, totally healed in, in, in ministry time in our service. The next week, we had a woman who needed a home loan but got rejected. 
So she went to HR of her company and the review of her salary was delayed. So she got together with the Urban Life Group. They prayed together, believed together. HR then approached her, apologised, increased her salary by $20,000 and backdated it to last year and her home loan got approved. Then the next week, we celebrated someone getting PR after needing it for years. The f- last week, we celebrated over a thousand kids in Planet Kids and Bring Your Buddy Day. And then just today, we celebrated a guy who needed a job, got a full-time job, tripled the pay that he was on. Come on, isn't that amazing? Just, just what we've seen testified about in Planet Shakers News. And there's still a few months to go in our year of victory. Man, I feel like that's worth putting a praise on. That our God is a God of victory. Our God is a God of miracles, provision, healing, breakthrough, growth, multiplication. Come on, isn't our God good? And I got good news for you today. If you need a yes from God, if you need a victory in God, if you need God to work a miracle in your life, then you're in the right place. You're in a place where the presence of God is. And come on today, if you would reach your faith up and grab a hold of the promises of God. You know, we testify to thank God for what He's done in the past. But really also what it says is, yes, God, do it again. Come on, is there anyone in this room that would say, yes, God, do it again in my life. Do it again in my circumstance. Do it again in my impossible need. So I wanna share a thought today that I've just called, just say yes. Turn to your neighbour, just say, just say yes. Come on, turn to your other neighbour, give him a fist bump, say, come on, you need to just say yes. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20. You can keep going for a minute. Nah, not yet, that's premature. (laughs) For all God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. Somebody say yes. yes. And through Christ, our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for His glory. All of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ. God has put a yes on His promises. We get a privilege to respond with our yes when we put an amen on His promises. Just say yes. Come on, just give give me a yes again. Just say yes. Come on, like you believe it, say yes. To all the promises of God. God, tonight we say yes to Your promises. We say yes to Your will. We say yes to Your presence, God. We say yes to everything You have for us. Your Word says it's the glory of God to conceal a matter and the glory of kings to search it out. God, we search out every miracle You got laid up waiting for us. Every word, every vision You got laid up waiting for us. Every breakthrough, every victory that You got laid up waiting for us. God, we put our yes, we put our amen on Your great promises tonight. God, I thank You that in Your presence, God, we find everything we need. The impossible things we face in this world melt into possible in Your presence. God, I thank You for people in this room that are sitting here tonight with great need. God, we're in the right place. Lord, because in Your presence, anything can turn around. Anything can happen. God, we give You glory. We give You praise tonight. Come on, if you believe that, give God a good yes. Come on, give me a good yes. Yes. Bless you. You know, um, learning to teach a tiny human how to behave is a very entertaining thing. My wife and I own three of them ourselves. And, uh, and you know, when you, when you get the privilege of driving a car on our roads, you got to go through a whole process where someone sits there and holds your hand while you drive and marks you and tests and log books and all of these things just to get a license to drive a car. You know when you have a kid, there's no license. There's no tests. They just send you home with the responsibility of raising a human. 
as if you know what you're doing. We had no idea what we were doing when we went home with our first, I remember walking out of the hospital holding this kid just going, how are they letting us leave right now? This is, this is highly irresponsible, it's ridiculous. I got good news, they're, they're all still alive and for the most part they're happy, depending on the minute, depending on the day, but you know, and it's our job to tell them what the right thing to do in life is. And sometimes we tell them things and they say, why? And I don't even know why, I'm just like, well, I don't have an answer, but this is what we're doing, so shush. <laughs> well, a couple of weeks ago, it was, it was one of those rare days in Melbourne where the sun was out. And, uh, and so we decided to enjoy it. You know, when our girls grow up, we want them to look back on their childhood, remembering that the sun does shine sometimes in Melbourne. And, uh, and so it was warm and it was a nice day. We put the splash pad out in our backyard and, and they were just running around nude. It was our backyard. There's no one around. They're all toddlers. They, they were having great fun playing in the water. And, and as they're out there, my eldest child looked at all of their clothes that they'd taken off and put on the porch and turned to us and said, can we put the clothes in the water? And my response initially in my head was, no. I don't wanna train you that this is good behaviour. Like what happens if they show up to Planet Kids and thinks that they, like someone, some leader's washing something under a tap and my child sees water, just like, this is a good idea, just starts to strip off and throw their clothes in. Kids will do that. Or you go to a mall and see a fountain there and just strip off and throw your clothes in there. Like that's not gonna be beneficial for me or for them. And so my, my inclination is to say no. But then the other reason I wanna say no is I can't be bothered cleaning up. But see, my wife and I have talked a lot about raising our children in this, in, in this positive mindset to, to fight to say yes as much as possible because it is so easy to say no. And trust me, our children, we say no to them a lot. They are as naughty as anyone's children when they wanna be. Like my eldest child, she prayed a prayer to invite Jesus into her heart a couple of weeks ago. That blessed me. I wasn't in the room, but my wife told me. But I tell you, in the last couple of weeks, I question it sometimes. <laughs> and then my two little ones, like one of them's very quick to pray. Like she's our little evangelist. The other one doesn't even wanna pray. Like she is 100% unsaved. She is definitely unsaved. She is a sinner. So you gotta help me pray for my kids. I need them to get saved because if they have even a fraction of the naughtiness that their parents had growing up, like my goodness, they need the Lord. And so, you know, trust me, like responsible parenting, we tell them no a heck of a lot. But a lot of the times, like in this instance where they wanted to throw their clothes in the water, the reason I wanted to say no was attached to a lack that I had. Truth is, I had a lack of energy. I was tired, it was a long day. I didn't wanna clean up. I had a lack of patience. I didn't want them to know that. The moment they smell weakness, they're gonna go for it. If they know I don't have patience, they are gonna test that out. So I didn't want them to know I didn't have patience, but I had a lack of patience. And I also had a lack of ability to keep an eye on three of them at once. I've only got two eyes. I don't have three. I can't keep an eye on all of them all the time. And so my inclination is to say no, because I have a lack. But in that moment, we said yes. And they had, the gra they grabbed their clothes, threw it in the water. They're like, look, mummy, we're doing laundry. <laughs> like, okay, that's wonderful. I thought well, that actually is genius. If that's something they wanna do, fantastic. Because there is a lot of laundry to do in our house. So no problems if that's something that is exciting for you. But I never knew this in all my years of living. I never knew that the pinnacle of human existence is to run around nude in your backyard, in your backyard, not in church, in your backyard. <laughs> and throw your clothes in the water. That's it, that's the pinnacle. According to the sounds that were coming out of their mouths, everything in their life up to that point had been a bit of a disappointment. But this right here was the greatest moment of their entire life. They had the greatest time. All because we said yes. All because we said yes. You see, I was reading this week about the power 
of a no mentality and how it, it is often psychologically attached to lack. I was lacking energy. I was lacking patience. I was lacking ability. And so the inclination is to say no. But this, uh, this, this, this goes for every area of our life and our followership of, of the Lord that when we get attached to a lack in our mentality, we, we attach ourselves to saying no over and over and living like this more and more, they were saying actually leads to a scarcity mentality. So saying no, because we've attached ourselves to lack leads to a scarcity mentality. And there were all these studies as I was reading, I wasn't even looking for this, but they just started showing up. All of these studies that went on to juxtapose a scarcity mentality with an abundance mentality. I wasn't even looking for that. But I stumbled upon, they, they say that the opposite of a scarcity mentality is an abundance mentality. I thought, I know exactly which one I want. I want abundance. The no mentality is gonna be attached to lack and lead to scarcity, but a yes mentality leads to abundance. The power of saying yes or no, that's pretty powerful. See, I think it's the same with God that people come to God so often with a no mentality. People assume that God just wants to say no. He's just in a hurry to say no to you. No, you can't do that. No, you can't do this. Now you're following God. No, you can't have fun. You can't have freedom. But that's not what the Word of God says. The Bible says in Galatians 5.1, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Christ has set us free from our past for what? For a greater freedom than we could ever know apart from Him. You see, by reading some of the things, just some of the things that we've seen in Planet Shakers News this year, of course I wanted to celebrate this year, but I also wanted to point them out because I wanted to remind us who it is that we are saying yes to. We know that God has put a yes on His promises. God says yes to salvation, yes to provision, yes to victory, yes to generosity, yes to breakthrough, yes to miracles, yes to life. God says yes to all these things, but we are got to put our yes in response. Come on, somebody just say yes. You see, most of us in this room have all said yes to God at some point. We've said yes to salvation because we believe God has the power to save. We put a yes on one of the promises of God. But we can't stop there. Saying yes to God when we get saved, it's just a start. We need to say yes to God every day. And this comes down to being intimate with God more than we are intimate with the things of this world. See, just, just look at the Bible. The story of the Israelites coming up out of captivity under Moses, they all said yes to following God out of slavery. They all said yes to following God towards the promised land. There was about 600,000 men, so with women and children, there's about 2 million people that all said yes to this journey with God. Do you know how many of them made the promised land? Two of them out of about 2 million that kept saying yes. Two million of them started with a yes, but somewhere along their journey following God, the yes turned into a no. This is why it's important we might start our Christian journey with a yes, but we gotta keep going with a yes. See, all through the Bible, there's stories of people that say no to God. The rich young ruler, he shows up to Jesus. He'd said yes to God in so many areas of his life. And Jesus laid one challenge on him and he said, no. Remember a no mentality, it's attached to lack. You see, this rich young ruler had a lack of revelation about provision. He trusted more in his ability to provide than God's. Or Jonah, you could take the story of Jonah. Jonah was called by God to go preach the good news in, in a city called Nineveh. And he put a no on that call. I don't know whether it's because he trusted more in his idea of justice or trusted more in his idea of salvation, but either way, he trusted more in his own understanding. He had a lack of revelation of God's sovereignty and God's call and God's understanding. And what happened is, he, he, when, when you have a lack of understanding, when you follow your own understanding instead of God's call, you, you, you're in a position of lack in life. You lack access to the fullness of God's supernatural power. See, there's plenty of, plenty of examples of people that said no to God. And the challenge for us in this world is all the stuff that we can get attached to. 
We can get attached to possessions and wealth. And if we're more intimate with our wealth and possessions than we are intimate with God, then we live a life that looks like the rich young ruler. We can get attached to our opportunities and responsibilities. And all of us have both of those things. None of, it doesn't mean they're bad to have opportunities and responsibilities, but if we're more attached to those things than we are God, that reminds me of the business owner. Jesus sent invitations out to His great banquet. And He said, come be a part of this great banquet. But this business owner said, no, no, no. My opportunity and my responsibility is too important. I'm not coming. He said, no to God. Or we get too attached to our baggage and our history. That reminds me of the woman, the Samaritan woman at the well that Jesus encountered. And if you're more attached to your baggage and your history than you are to the things of God, then you're gonna live a life that, you know, she, she, she had been married five times. She was working on her sixth marriage before she finally encountered everything that she was looking for. See, if we become too attached to the things of this world, if we're too intimate, if we hang on to the things of this world more than we hang on to God, we end up saying no to God in certain areas of our life. But come on, remember, no is attached to lag. But last week, Pastor Russell preached this amazing word about this never-ending, overwhelming supply that God has on offer and available. So let's not live our lives like God lacks in any area. God has everything that we need. There is no lack in Him. When we say yes to God, He is faithful to back up His promises. You just need to believe. When God has a promise, you must believe. When God says He can heal, you must believe. When God says He's our provider, you must believe. When God says He's going to direct your path, you must believe. When God says He's got a call on your life, you must believe. You just got to say yes. Somebody say yes. yes. See, I mean... Look at some of the great examples of yes in our Bible. Abraham said yes to a promise. Joseph said yes to a dream. Moses said yes to an impossible task. Gideon said yes to overcoming fear. David said yes to the anointing to become a king. The disciples said yes to following Jesus. Uh, Paul, Saul said yes to becoming the apostle Paul. See, when we choose to say yes to God each and every day, we position our lives to live in the overwhelming supply of God. However, each and every one of those great people that said yes to God, they also paid a price. It cost them something. Abraham said yes to the promise. But yes to the promise meant getting up the very next day and leaving the only place he'd ever known to go and live in a land that would later become the promised land. But he lived in tents the rest of his days. I don't even like camping. Joseph said yes to a dream from God, but he had to go through almost 20 years of hell, going through slavery and the prison to see that dream come to pass. Moses said yes to an impossible task. God said, I want you to go and stand up to the greatest, most evil ruler in the known world back then. I'm not gonna pick a country, but you in your head, pick a country of like who you think is the worst leader in the world right now. Imagine God gave a call to you. It's like, okay, you gotta go and tell them to stop what they're doing. <laughs> okay, God, do I get an army? Do I get like a coalition of nations to back me up? Do I get an aircraft carrier and fighter jets and people standing either side of me? God's like, nope. You get a stick. That's what you get. Can you imagine that? That's what Moses was called to do. Gideon was called to stand on a battlefield all alone, hundreds of metres away from his closest compatriot. Overwhelmingly outmatched 500 to one to live the life God called him to live. David received the anointing to become king, but he had to go through almost 20 years of being chased and harassed with people trying to kill him. The disciples said yes to following Jesus, but they had to give up houses and businesses, went through ridicule. The Apostle Paul said yes to following Jesus, but he gave up everything that he had worked for his entire life. It cost them something. See, saying yes to Jesus is not always the easy option, but is always the right option. 
is always the best choice to say yes to. It is always worth it. See, when we get tempted into the comforts and the norms of this world, we can silently and sometimes unconsciously end up saying no to God in areas of our life, but that leaves us in a position of lack. It's attached to lack, but it leaves us in a position of lack. Saying yes to God can be uncomfortable, but it never leaves us in lack. Saying yes to God puts us in a position of need but not in a position of lack. You see, being in a position of need is the greatest privilege as a man or woman of God. If you are following God and you need nothing, might I suggest you've gone off track somewhere. Needing something from God is a great privilege. I need His power. I need His presence. I need His provision. I need His blessing. I need His breakthrough. I need His victory. I need His Word. I need His revelation. I need His encounter. I need Him. Let me prove it to you from the Word. We heard this in the sermon last week. Philippians 4.19 says, My God shall supply all your need according to His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. See, being in need is brilliant, but if you don't need anything from God, what's the overwhelming supply for? You don't need it. You don't need it. But but see, there is more provision in one act of obedience than in a lifetime of your own efforts. I'm gonna ask the band to come back. I was thinking of an illustration, preparing this word. And I imagined, imagine walking out to the church foyer after the service tonight. And someone with very visible Planet Shakers identification. (laughs) We're watching you. Hands you a set of keys and says, I bought you a house. It's paid off. It's a big house. And a big house takes a long time to clean. So I bought a cleaner to come with your house. Maybe a chef as well, not a problem. And it's in the perfect suburb. The suburb you really wanna live in, it's in that suburb. It's, it's, it's amazing. And I've got an interior design d- designer in to, to design the whole inside of the house. It's beautiful. It's exactly the style you want. How do you know what style I want? We've been listening to you through your phone. <laughs> and you get in your car and, and, and you drive together to this brand new house. It's, it, it's exquisite. You're overwhelmed. Walking up to the front door, you're like, this is unbelievable. And you walk in, you open the house, it's spectacular. And you go into the front room. And in my dream, the front room is, it's a sitting room where you sit. There's no TV. There's no children's toys. There's no children. I love my children. I also love sitting. And you just sit there. And your friend says, enjoy what I paid for you to have. And they walk out and you just sit there and it is the greatest sit of your life. The couches are comfortable. You start relaxing in your new room, scrolling on your phone. Day turns into night. You're like, oh, this is so comfortable. I'm just going to sleep here. So you sleep in your front room. And then the morning comes, you wake up, you walk out the front door, you go to work. You come home at night so excited. You walk in the front door, you go and sit in your front room. What a front room. This must be the greatest front room in all the world. You sit there, you enjoy it again. You get comfortable. You start scrolling. You're like, this is unbelievable. I'm so blessed. Maybe your chef brings you a meal in the front room. Not a problem. Bit of fried chicken. Thank you very much. You get comfortable again. You're like, I'm just going to sleep here. You sleep there. You wake up walk out the front door, you go to work, you come home again that night, you go sit in your front room, you're like, wow, what a front And day after day, you enjoy that front room. Imagine if your friend found out that you were enjoying the front room, but nothing else. Be a bit disappointing. It's like, man, I should have just bought you a room instead of a whole house. 
paid a huge price and you're just accessing the front room? You understand what Jesus won for us on the cross. He paid the greatest price. He paid the highest price. The Bible says that the promises of God are yes, they are a resounding yes. They've been fulfilled through what Christ did upon the cross. Through the cross, God says yes to salvation, but God also says yes to healing and yes to deliverance and yes to breakthrough and yes to growth and yes to life and yes to multiplication and yes to victory. There are all these promises of God that He won for us on the cross. And don't you think if He paid such a price for us to have these promises that He would want us to access each and every one of these promises not just say I'm saved that's pretty good I'm saved that's pretty good saying yes to God at a start that's a good start but we're going to say yes to the promises of God each and every day and sometimes it's uncomfortable and sometimes it costs us something but saying yes to His promises friend it's exactly the life God's called you to live. You're never going to be in lack. You're going to be exactly in the position God's called you to live in. Position for overwhelming supply. So I came to stir our faith today that we would say yes. That we would put a yes in response to God's resounding yes. I say yes to following you with my life. I say yes to pressing in to the life that you called me to live. I say yes to pressing in to lay a hold of the promises you got for me. So tonight with everyone standing, on all over this room let's be standing I'm encouraged because I am convinced in this world for all of the things you need in your life you may find a temporary solution in the world but you will find exactly what you need for everything in your life here in the presence of God. If you need a miracle tonight, you're going to find it in His presence. If you need a healing, you're going to find it in His presence. If you need a breakthrough in provision, you're going to find it in His presence. If you need to be healed of asthma or a herniated disc in your spine or a sprained wrist or cancer or allergies, come on, you're going to find it in His presence. If you need hope to be restored, if you need dreams and visions to be imparted, you're going to find it in His presence. If you need to call a God on your life, you're going to find it in His presence. Thanks for joining us today. I hope that your faith was filled and you were encouraged. If you have any prayer requests or want to connect with us further, search for us on our social media at Planet Shakers. We'd love to hear from you.